Over the past 15 years or so, the Chinese Navy, the People's Liberation Army Navy, or the PLAN, has developed a wide range of sophisticated and capable new vessels, produced them in large numbers, and at a surprisingly rapid pace. The plan is now the world's largest navy by number of ships, but not by tonnage, which remains the United States Navy. How powerful will the plan be on the eve of 2028, just four years away? Now, good day and salutations. Today's briefing, the Chinese Navy of 2028. How many warships? Which types? This briefing will assess the likely total of vessels commissioned and in service ready for operations by January 2028. I'll begin with the service combatants, then cover amphibious vessels, and finally, submarines. The largest and most significant of the new additions to the Chinese Navy's surface force is Plans 18 Fujian, uh, launched in June 2022. It is a catabar, catapult-assisted takeoff, but arrested recovery carrier, similar in size to the former US Navy Kitty Hawk class. The Fujian, aka Carrier 003, is the largest conventionally powered aircraft carrier in the world and will be the largest and most capable carrier outside of the US Navy's nuclear powered carriers. As we are yet to see proof of another carrier under construction, it is likely only it will be ready by 2028. While launching aircraft by catapults is new for the plan, broader aircraft carrier operations are not. Having operated Stobar, short takeoff but arrested recovery carriers, since 2012, in the form of Plan 16 Liaoning, commissioned in September 2012, and Plan 17 Shandong, commissioned in December 2019. By 2028, these carriers could become even more capable if they operate the J-35 multi-role stealth fighter. Uh, see earlier briefing on the Shandong and Liaoning carriers linked below. The largest and most capable of the carrier escorts or surface action group lead ships are the Type 055. Classified as destroyers by the PLA and as cruisers by the US Navy, they are equipped with 112 universal VLS cells, six lightweight torpedo tubes, a 130mm gun, a 24-cell point defence missile system, a close-in weapon system and two anti-submarine warfare helicopters. These helicopters can be either the new Z-20 or the larger Z-18. The 055 contributes significantly to all warfighting domains, but will likely have a focus on surface strike unless it is operating without a dedicated air warfare destroyer. Uh, these ships remain in production. While the Type 055 has significant air warfare capabilities, the primary air warfare vessels of any carrier strike group or surface action group will likely be the Type 052 Deltas or Delta Lemas. Although fitted with less VLS cells than the 055, we should expect the focus of those cells to be on long-range air defence missiles. The extended Delta Lima variant, which operates the Z-20 ASW helicopters, remains in production. But the first planned vessel to uh, be capable of area air defence, and still capable ships today despite not yet being upgraded, are the Type 052 Charlies. The 052 introduced both fixed, active, and electronically scanned array radar and vertically launched surface-to-air missiles for the first time into planned service. While very capable in air warfare domain, it is limited in other domains as its VLS is limited to surface-to-air missiles. In addition to these modern and very capable ships, some of the older and less capable destroyers will likely still be in service by 2028, especially as some have recently received refits. These will likely include the four Russian-based Sovremenis, two Type 052 Bravos, two Type 051 Charlies, and one Type 051 Bravo, all of which can still contribute significantly in the anti-service domain and release more capable destroyers for other missions. For example, they might act as command vessels for ASW task groups 
supported by a number of frigates. The last element of the surface fleet combatant force are the frigates, uh, primarily focused on anti-submarine warfare. By 2028, this force will likely be composed solely of the Type 054 family, most numerous of which will be the 054 Alphas. The 054 Alphas are solid and cost-effective fleet-capable ASW vessels. Uh, able to contribute across all warfighting domains, these blue water-capable surface combatants are ideal for outer perimeter work in a carrier strike group or surface action group. Uh, its production has ended. Complementing and over time replacing the Type 054 Alphas in uh, the carrier strike groups and surface action groups will be the 054 Bravo. While larger, they will generally be equipped with the same weapon systems as the 04 Alphas. However, its new rotating active electronically scanned array radar and an integrated mass carrying uh, various electronic support measures will likely result in greater air search detection range and improved targeting fidelity. A production of this vessel has just begun. But the plan is not only about blue water operations. Unlike many other nations, the Chinese Navy also has significant brown and green water operational requirements, including in the littoral and coastal areas. In these areas, vessels smaller than frigates can be particularly useful. This is where the plans Type 056 Alpha Corvettes and Type 022 Fast Attack Craft have an important role. While the original 22 Type 056 Corvettes uh, have been being transferred to the uh, China Coast Guard, only the improved anti-submarine warfare version, the 056 Alphas, remain in Navy service. The 056 Alpha is a capable platform for littoral and near sea operations, thereby releasing the larger frigates for operations further afield, or where their greater capabilities are needed for higher intensity operations. The Type 022 fast attack craft also has a role to play in certain mission scenarios closer to the Chinese coast, around Taiwan and throughout the South China Sea. Supporting these combat vessels, providing fuel, munitions, food, etc., are the replenishment ships. Given the plan's lack of overseas bases, these vessels are critical for the carrier strike groups and surface action groups to stay at sea longer and to operate further from China. The plan has a sizable number of capable underway replenishment ships, including the Type 903, 903 Alpha and 908. The production of these ships has ended. The most capable of the plan's replenishment vessels are the large Type 901 AOR, fast underway replenishment ships. These ships are a central element of the plan's carrier strike group deployments with only the US Navy and Royal Navy operating vessels with this level of capability. Note, we are yet to see any additional Type 901s being built to add to the two already in service, or indeed any similar vessel being constructed to support the Fujian carrier. Moving to amphibious assault ships, the plan has the second most capable fleet after the United States Navy. The most significant Vessels currently in service with the plan are the Type 075 Landing Helicopter Docks, or LHDs, of which the plan now has four. Capable of launching LCACs and Z-18 triplift helicopters, these vessels are the most capable LHDs outside of the US Navy. We are yet to see proof of construction of the much talked about Type 076 assault carrier, but it is possible that one or two could be operational in 2028 if they are laid down soon. If not, more 075s are likely to be built. Supporting these are the Type 071 landing pad docks, or LPDs. Again, capable of launching both LCACs and Z18 medium lift helicopters, they represent both a significant augmentation to the Type 075s and an independent amphibious capability in their own right. They are also often seen used in support of humanitarian assistance and disaster response missions. Uh, while its production has ended, it could be restarted. 
Adding to this ocean-going amphibious capability are the Type 072 landing ship tanks, LSTs. Although they do not provide the floatable well dock or helicopter facilities that the Type 075 and 071s do, they provide significant lift capability, especially for vehicles that can swim ashore or where the assault area is suitable for the LST to beach. Supplementing the LSTs are the LSMs, the landing ship mediums, comprised of the Type 073 and 074 families. Able to operate independently or supporting larger vessels, they are particularly important for planned operations against Taiwan and in the South China Sea. A significant discrete amphibious capability in the plan are the Type 728 LCACs. The largest LCACs in military service, the plan is now the largest operator of these craft. Able to carry large payloads over reasonable distances and at high speed, they represent a significant operational military threat close to China, in particular in a Taiwan or South China Sea scenario. And finally, moving to submarines, the plan is slowly developing the third most powerful submarine launched nuclear deterrent capability after the US and Russia. Currently based around the Type 094 SSBN, these will soon be joined by the Type 096, likely significantly quieter than the preceding 094s. In terms of SSNs, the nuclear powered attack submarines, again we see a slower development process than that of the surface fleet. The current Type 093s will likely soon be joined by the 095, which is expected to be significantly more silent than the 093. Both the 094 and 096 are likely already in early stage of production. Even though the plan is slowly but significantly investing in nuclear powered submarines, they have not neglected continual production and improvement of conventionally powered submarine capabilities. These SSKs include the Type 039, Type 039 Alpha Bravo, the Project 636 Mike, uh, Russian Kilos, and the Type 039 Charlie. The new Type 039 Charlie might be a significant development if it is produced in significant numbers. Uh, see separate briefing on this linked below. So the planned fleet in 2028 might look as follows. Uh, three aircraft carriers, one Katabar and two Stobar, with possibly one Katabar carrier under construction. 64 destroyers with at least 12 Type 055s, around 37 Type 052 Delta slash Delta Lemas, six Type 052 Charlies, four Sovremenis, two Type 052 Bravos, and three Type 051 Bravo slash Charlies. Around 40 frigates, with 32 of the type 054 slash 054 alphas and perhaps eight type 054 bravos and around 130 corvettes or fast attack craft with the 50 type 056 alphas and around 80 type 022 fast attack craft. In terms of amphibious and support ships, perhaps six LHDs with either the four Type 075s and two Type 076s, or if the Type 076 is not constructed over the next few years, then perhaps six Type 075s. Eight landing pad docks consisting of the current 8071 LPDs. Around 65 landing ships comprising around 36 of the Type 072 landing ship tanks and 29 of the Type 073-074 landing ship mediums. Eight of the large Type 728 landing craft air cushion Zuburs and 13 underway replenishment ships. At least two and possibly three of the Type 901 fast underway replenishment ships, nine of the Type 903-903 alphas and one Type 908. In terms of submarines, possibly eight SSBNs with at least six Type 094 slash alphas and perhaps two of the Type 096s. For SSNs, a 
approximately 14, with around 12 of the type 903s and 93 alphas, and perhaps two of the type 095s. For SSKs, approximately 46 in total, with 24 of the type 39 Alpha, Bravo and Charlie, Yuan class, 12 of the type 39 Song, and 10 of the Project 636 Mike Kilos. In addition to these, there will also be store ships, including the type 904 family, and medical and mine countermeasure vessels. In summary, the plan continues the trend over the past 15 years or so in increasing the quality and quantity of its naval vessels, largely by new builds, but also through refits to existing vessels that still have useful service lives. The future increase in numbers of vessels going forward might not be as explosive as the past 10 years, but the plan is certainly increasing its capabilities across all vessel types. How well they will perform in high-end conflict remains to be seen. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Violator Sarah.